Hey, what's up YouTube and welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Have you ever wondered if Amazon FBA is still a profitable business opportunity in 2023 and beyond? If so, then you're not alone as I see this question all the time. So in today's video, we're going to dive deep into the world of Amazon FBA, uncovering the potential profits, challenges, and really the opportunities that exist today and will continue to exist in the future. So if you're considering starting an Amazon FBA business, or you want to take your existing one to the next level, then this is a must watch video. Now, before we get started, I've been doing this for a while, I am doing a contest on this video for one lucky winner. So if if you want to be entered to win a copy of my Amazon best selling book, Side Hustle to Full Time Income, plus the free course and the audiobook that comes with it, all you got to do is drop a comment below on today's video and make sure that you hit that notification bell because you want to tune into the next video to see if you won, since I'll put the winner into the middle of that video, just like you'll see in today's as well. Now, let's start by taking a look at the bigger picture. In 2022, Amazon's revenue skyrocketed to a jaw dropping $514 billion with third party sellers contributing to 22.7% of that revenue or $117 billion. Now out of those sellers, a whopping 89% of them use the fulfillment by Amazon or FBA program to run their businesses. Now I have actually seen reports that it's 73% and I've seen others that say over 90%, but ultimately uh, that doesn't matter because what truly matters is that either way, it is a lot of sellers and it is the majority of those sellers that use the FBA program. So this means that FBA is a massive part of Amazon's overall success, and it truly shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Yes, there's going to be other competition with other programs, other platforms, et cetera. Yes, you can do Amazon through fulfilling the products yourself or doing seller fulfilled prime and getting some of the advantages of the FBA program while also fulfilling items yourself. However, there's massive disadvantages to that as well. But ultimately, this is the place to be. And I highly recommend if you're going to sell on Amazon that you take control of your business by giving some of that up to Amazon because you want to trust them to help you in your business to streamline the processes, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Now, let's get down to some of the nitty gritty of how this works and how much money that you can actually make as an Amazon seller. Well, the answer may surprise you. And according to recent stats prepared by Jungle Scout, 65% of third party sellers report profit margins higher than 10% and 32% of sellers report profit margins above 20%. That's a pretty big amount of margin when you consider how many sellers are on Amazon and when you consider how many fees Amazon actually takes out from their sellers anyway. Uh, ultimately, monthly sales vary, but most sellers earn between $1,000 and $25,000 per month. And these figures truly show that there's still plenty of room for growth and profit in the Amazon FBA space if you want to put the work into your business. But before you dive headfirst in Amazon FBA, it's essential to consider both the pros and the cons. And so I made a list of both for you. So some of the pros include one, access to Amazon's customers. This is an obvious one, but with nearly 3 billion visits per month and over 300 million prime customers worldwide, and that continues to go up by the way, Amazon offers unparalleled exposure for your products, whether you're doing private label, uh, arbitrage, wholesale, whatever type of business that you decide to pursue on Amazon, you're going to get much more exposure for your products. And number two in the pros list is Amazon handles all of the customer service for you when you're using the FBA program. So when customers need to return items or if they have issues with the products, they need to reach out to Amazon for these issues, which helps tremendously in saving you time. It gives you the ability to push customers off if they ask you questions to talk to Amazon and they handle that for you. You're essentially paying Amazon with these fees uh, for this service where they're handling customer service and you don't have to worry about your time or hiring an employee 
employee or virtual assistant to do that on the regular or on a regular basis. Now, the third pro is that Amazon handles or FBA handles the shipping and the logistical issues. So once you send your shipment into Amazon FBA, they will take care of the storage. They'll take care of order fulfillment, returns, prep, ship, etc., making it so much easier for you to manage your business because you don't need to have a massive warehouse and a whole fulfillment team and a whole software program to help you send out the orders properly. Amazon handles all of that and streamlines it for you. Now, number four is that there's a better ability to get the buy box. I've actually done a whole video breaking down Amazon's buy box very recently, which I recommend checking out after this one. Uh, but being a good quality FBA seller is a huge component of getting the buy box, which ultimately helps you get much more sales. If you're looking for the video, it's actually called buy box theory. And so you can find that on my channel. Uh, I, it's, it's a little um, detailed, but I think that that's good if you're looking to figure out what will help you get the buy box more. Now, the fifth pro is Prime Shipping. FBA sellers' uh, products receive the Prime badge, uh, which significantly helps you to increase sales because customers want to get their products as fast as possible and they trust buying products from sellers with the Prime badge specifically. Uh, now, customers still buy products from FBM sellers or fulfilled by merchant sellers as well, but there's typically gonna be slower shipping times unless they are seller fulfilled Prime. Uh, and so that's a whole separate program, whole separate video to look into. But to me, the FBA program is worth it because you get the Prime badge and so many of these other pros as well. And then the sixth pro that I have on this list is that the ability for you to never have to touch your products. So if you use a prep center, you can order products, have that prep center do all the work to send into Amazon for you. It ultimately helps you to work from anywhere. You could legitimately be working from anywhere you wanted, place orders, it goes to your prep prep center, the prep center preps them and sends them to Amazon for you. Technically, you could use a prep center to do all of your fulfilled by merchant orders as well, but there's going to be additional fees for the storage there and a whole bunch of stuff that you have to consider in addition to it. I'm not saying that this is strictly a pro for FBA, but it is still a big pro in my opinion for FBA because prep centers are abundant at this point for you to be able to use in your business. Now, just remember that it's not all rainbows and sunshine. There are cons to the FBA program. And some of those include, uh, first, storage fees. So storing your items in an Amazon fulfillment center comes with monthly and long-term storage fees. So this is going to reduce your profit margins. However, learning to manage your inventory correctly is going to help you avoid these as much as possible, which is why I recommend regularly on my channel, replendashboard.com, to help you manage your inventory and restock amounts properly if you're an arbitrage or wholesale seller. If you're doing private label, there may be better solutions for you. But if you're arbitrage or wholesale, check out replendashboard.com. Now, the second con is that Amazon sides with customers over sellers consistently. Uh, so in many cases, if a customer complains, you are going to be guilty until you are proven innocent. So it can lead to headaches uh, of having to prove authenticity on products that are legitimate, but Amazon puts the burden of proof on you over the customer, which can put some risk to your business if you're getting a lot of complaints. Complaints. Typically being a very good seller, buying legitimate products, sending those in, you're going to be fine. Uh, but ultimately, this can be an issue. However, this is more of a con of Amazon and not of FBA only because you're going to have just as many potential issues with FBM or fulfilling those products yourself than as much as you would with FBA. The third con are the FBA fees uh, because the fees are higher because they are going to cover the costs of storing, picking, packing, and shipping your orders. Uh, and Amazon is going to charge these fees typically between 30 to 40 percent of your product price i've seen it go a little bit higher in some cases it really depends on the inventory you're sending in in some cases it can be a little bit lower but usually it's going to be 30 to 40 percent however because amazon tells you these fees up front you can build them in and know if you're going to be profitable on a product before you ever buy it and send it to amazon so it's not hidden you can see that using a lot of the calculators amazon has a free calculator through seller central or the seller app uh, and ultimately they are very upfront with those for their sellers now the fourth 
Icon is the brands that are policing their listings. This is something that grows each and every year. If you do arbitrage or wholesale, there are many different brands that file false complaints against sellers because they don't like that you're selling their products online on Amazon uh, without coming to them first and getting permission. Now, it's not a huge, huge problem to where you just can't find any good products. Plenty of people do arbitrage and can deal with these things on a regular basis without issue. But it can be annoying to deal with as the account health issues come up because if you're buying legitimate products with documentation in the form of receipts and invoices from authorized distributors, you should be just fine, but you still have to deal with them and it's a headache sometimes. Again, this is more of an Amazon issue and not an FBA specific issue. Uh, and I recommend contacting Jeff Schick at jeffschick.com. You should be able to see the link below and in the description uh, to have a lawyer on a low monthly retainer fee to help protect your business from these false claims. I've done videos with him before on my channel. If you'd like to check those out, uh, I use Jeff and, and I believe it's an extremely important service to add into your business to help protect you from some of these false claims that brands uh, and customers uh, are, are sending to Amazon and potentially getting you in trouble. And if you have a lawyer on retainer helping you with that at a low fee, totally worth it. I don't get any kind of commission from that. Either. I don't have no arrangement with Jeff, but I just love the service. Highly recommend checking it out. And then the fifth con are the high return rates. You're going to get more returns as an FBA seller. It kind of is the inverse of the pro that I gave that Amazon handles the customer service, but because of that, you're gonna get high return rates. Uh, Amazon has a very generous return policy, uh, which can lead to issues for sellers in many different forms. And some customers take advantage of this and return things that aren't the same as what they purchased um, and all types of different issues. But luckily, Amazon is doing their best to figure these bad actors out and to help sellers avoid this if they can. Unfortunately, they're still gonna come up, but Amazon is trying to reduce the issue. So if they see uh, somebody that's consistently doing that, they will shut down accounts um, for that. And that person could technically go open a new one potentially, but it's still something that Amazon is trying to avoid. Now, with all the competition on Amazon, a question I also get is, can new sellers still thrive on the platform? And the answer to that is absolutely. Although the marketplace is truly more competitive than ever, there's more sellers than ever, there's still plenty of room for success on the platform. And the reason is Amazon's market share continues to expand, which means that the customer base is growing too. So to maximize your chances of success as a new seller on the platform, you can check out uh, some of my other YouTube videos and be sure to do thorough research and choose the right products to sell which I have tons of training for free on this channel for you. You can learn Keepa, other sourcing methods for arbitrage and wholesale, all on my channel for free right here. Now, starting an Amazon FBA business might seem intimidating. There's a lot of things to learn. It is simple, but it's not easy. It takes hard work. And there are tons of resources available to help you master this process. So by investing in your education, you're going to set yourself up for long-term success. And some investments come in the form of not using money. You can invest your time. And so some free resources that I recommend, in addition to subscribing to my YouTube channel, are number one, a community. So if you'd like to join a free community with over 70,000 other e-commerce sellers, then I recommend one specific group that I've been a part of since 2015. And now I currently help lead that group and answer questions, etc. It's called the My silent team Facebook community, completely free to join. And it's a very nice group. We actually all are very good at helping each other. I love it. So you can head over to bit.ly forward slash MST group. The link again should be below and in the description. Now, the second free thing is a free Keepa training guide that I actually have on my website at askjimmysmith.com. You should be able to see it right at the top of the page. Uh, and if you can't find it there, then you can go to askjimmysmith.com forward slash Keepa guide, and that will get you the free guide if you want to learn how to analyze products properly using Keepa, which is invaluable to an arbitrage and wholesale business. The third thing is a free podcast at Silent Sales Machine Radio. Love that podcast. Consistently getting multiple per week out, tons of success stories, and they interview students highly recommend it. And then the fourth thing is other YouTube channels that teach quality content. And that's the hardest part is finding the channels that teach quality content. So make sure if you do find somebody, look at comments, see how they're doing in other communities and really take a look at um, if there's somebody that you should trust for your business. 
So if you're considering Amazon FBA as a business opportunity, now is the time. Truly, I'm sure you've heard this before, but the best time to start was 10 years ago, but the next best time to start is today. And there you have it. Amazon FBA presents both challenges and opportunities, but with thorough research, smart product selection, and a commitment to learning, there's no reason why you can't find success in this marketplace. Don't forget that if you want to win a free copy of my book, Side Hustle to Full-Time Income, then drop a comment down below and tune into the next video to see if you are the lucky winner. Let me know your thoughts, questions, and experiences in those comments. And if you're interested in any courses or software programs I recommend, check out the description below for all my links. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more content on Amazon side hustles, artificial intelligence, and business building strategies, and share your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.